Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video of myself, Amart, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we are going to start off proceedings with some news regarding USB 4. Now you may recall back in March there was news floating around the internet about USB 4, which is an upcoming USB standard based on Thunderbolt which I did do a video on back in the day, and just to refresh your memory, it was back in March, which somehow, it's, it's already mid-June, don't ask me how, because I don't know. Anyway, it's set to double the transfer speeds of USB 3.2, raising them to 40 Gbps. Now, obviously, this was all very exciting, but at the time, we literally had no idea when this was going to be put in place. However, there was speculation that it could take roughly a year and a half, so it would be sort of late 2020, and that has pretty much been confirmed according to a report from Anantech.com, who has basically had a statement from the USB Promoter Group basically confirming that, yep, we are going to be seeing USB 4 products in late 2020. Now, they aren't promising this, they aren't saying an exact release date or even release window of a month, they're just saying late 2020, by the end of 2020. So, that is their expectation, of course, as with anything, things can go wrong, plans can change, but given that the specification itself is set to be published in the second half of this year, that would give companies plenty of time to actually adapt, make new devices, make sure the compatibility on their old devices is there, all that sort of stuff. But when we actually see mass adoption, it's tough to say. Of course, we haven't really seen all that much from USB 3.2 as of yet. So, yes, they may be ready to have it made products out of by late 2020, but when will we actually see them? Unfortunately, only time will tell. But, enough on that, we have a little bit of an update from AMD again, as of course Paul talked a little bit yesterday about what's going on with their motherboard situation, and we have a very interesting report from WCCF Tech next. Of course, one of the things we saw announced at their Computex conference was the X570 motherboards for Ryzen 3000. However, it has been spotted on computerbase.de, that we're going to be getting an X590 chipset. And this is not the first time we have seen X590 actually being mentioned. There was a tweet going around a while back regarding an Asus ROG motherboard, which was going to have X590. And now, of course, we have this computerbase.de article as well. So we also have evidence from a computerbase forum member who basically posted that deep within the BIOS files for X570 motherboards, there is a listing for the X590. And it is listed alongside the X570, so it does make sense that this is an entirely new chipset, and not just another name or internal name for the X570. Which, you know, admittedly is still a possibility, this is by no means ironclad, yep, yep, that's confirmed boys, pack it up lads. But it is definitely quite persuasive. And there has been speculation around the internet that the X590 chipsets are going to offer more PCIe 4.0 lanes compared to the other motherboards available for the Ryzen 3000, and we're also apparently going to be getting slightly better I.O. Now, the main question that's probably on your mind is how much is this X590 going to cost? And obviously, we literally don't know. It's entirely possible that this doesn't exist. This is old information or incorrectly being interpreted or something else entirely. There was a lot of speculation going on about what the higher-end motherboards for the Ryzen 3000 series are actually going to cost. I would highly recommend watching Paul's video from yesterday if you haven't already seen it because he talks a lot about what the current rumblings are on the price tags and given the prices that we could expect for some of the higher end uh, chipsets for Ryzen 3000, we're probably not looking at a small price tag for the X590. It is most likely going to be premium prices, but that is pure speculation on my part based on Paul's speculation from yesterday, which again, do check out. There will be a link to it in the description below this video. Oh, and there is also going to be a link to the computerbase.de article and of course that Anantec article that I mentioned on the previous topic. So, let's move on to our next topic, which is actually regarding Cyberpunk 2077 and ray tracing. Now, as I've said, pretty much ad nauseum at this point, and as I'm sure everyone else has said as well, this is hardly a unique opinion, 
one of the main issues that we've had with NVIDIA's ray tracing is the lack of game support that we've actually had. One of the flagship games that NVIDIA touted to have this technology, which of course was Rise, sorry, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, not Rise of the Tomb Raider, only just got it quite recently, and we have seen slowly adoption improve, but it's still not great. However, Cyberpunk 2077 was just announced as a NVIDIA RTX title. Now, just saying ray tracing doesn't really mean much. It can be used for a lot of different things. It's a very versatile technology. Now, this includes reflection, shadows, and illumination. So what is Cyberpunk 2077 going to be using ray tracing for? RTX ray tracing specifically for? And is going to be having ray trace, ambient occlusion, and diffused illumination. So what does this actually mean? Most of you are probably familiar with ambient occlusion. Is a fairly light effect in terms of the impact of performance that casts short rays from corners and crevices in order to accurately portray objects and small portions of a scene that have low light. The more interesting part of what I just said is the diffused illumination because that more accurately just portrays the way the way excuse me light actually reflects on one object and also illuminates others around it. So basically it's a more realistic portrayal of how light actually works in real life. Now obviously Cyberpunk 2077 isn't out for quite some time, but CD Projekt are, at least at present, working on it being quite a light touch throughout the game, probably due to the rather high price you have to pay in terms of the hardware you need to have, and of course the impact on performance that you can have even with a high-powered RTX rig. Obviously that's going to improve as CD Projekt work on the game and of course ray tracing itself improves so we may see the amount of ray tracing amped up or we may see it just being a light touch option. We're going to have to wait and see unfortunately but it is nice to see more ray tracing being implemented especially on a game that is going to have a lot of really cool light effects with all the neon and stuff going around. I think potentially it could really elevate the game to next level in terms of the beauty of its graphics. So the last thing I want to focus on for this video today is some comments from Phil Spencer that he made regarding the Xbox Game Pass, Steam and Epic Games Store and this was an interview done by PC Gamer. I am very much only going to touch on a couple of questions that they focused on here so you can find a link to their full interview in the description below this video. So obviously the main thing I want to focus on with this is the Xbox Game Pass as one of the bigger reveals for this was that we're going to be seeing a lot of their games come to Steam. And we have a question regarding that to Phil Spencer now. And they, their question specifically was, with Steam, what's your philosophy around releases? You've named some of the games that are coming to Steam. Is your long-term plan to bring a back catalogue to Steam and every new game, or is it going to be more selective than that? And Phil says, quote, I wouldn't say it's more selective. My expectation is that our games will be available on Steam. You can never say always ever, because then something will happen with rights in certain situations where something might not happen. But we have a really good relationship with the team over there. We go over and talk with Scott Lynch, Eric Johnson, and Gabe a lot about the plans we have. It's a good, healthy conversation. So there's nothing in our plans that would say there's a reason we couldn't continue to ship our games on Steam, and they've been incredibly supportive with us, which I appreciate. On the back catalogue, it's just work, honestly. It's just physics. Are we going to go back and let's pick something Fury 3? I'm showing my age now. I don't know, honestly, on the back catalogue. It would just be about finding the right time to do it. Is there enough demand? I love what we're doing with Age of Empires right now. Taking the Age franchise and bringing it back. I love what we're doing with Flight Sim. But obviously Flight Sim is a new build. What the franchise looks, which looks fantastic. The back catalogue is a good question. We don't have a great answer for you right now. But it's not out of the question by any stretch. And to be honest, I think that's a fair enough response. He is absolutely correct. They can't promise that all of their games ever are going to come to Steam. All sorts of licensing and red tape and legal issues are tangled up in that question. And the same with the back catalogue as well. You know, That's why we've seen some great games come to the Xbox One back with compatibility. But by no means have we seen every game. Because sometimes it's just not worth the work that it would take to bring this game to the platform in terms of demand. And obviously the developer's time. All that sort of stuff. So... Uh, Fair enough to this. Now another thing that I want to touch on is his opinion on the Epic Games exclusivity strategy. Now as I touched on the other day when I was talking about Shinmu 3, this has caused a lot of controversy and ire from a lot of people as we have seen numerous games that were supposed to be on Steam be now timed exclusive to the Epic Games platform which in itself is not very popular just because of security concerns blah blah blah. So 
They need to really ask him, what do you make of their strategy on PC? And he said, quote, we're taking an approach of, as you say, open, and going with the approach that people should be able to buy the games in the stores they want. But I'm not, Tim is someone I've known for years. He's a friend of mine. He's got a strategy that they want with Epic. I believe that Epic is working from what they believe is what's best for both them, their creators and their players. And I've never seen them act in a different way. So I'm not judging. We're picking a different strategy. I guess we'll see in the end what works. But I think all up Epic has been incredibly important to gaming, not just PC gaming. The role that Unreal has played over the years and unlocking creators at all different levels, the games that they built, I've got a ton of respect for them and what they're trying to do. They're taking their approach and I get it and we're just taking a different approach. And that's about as fair as a response you can get from Phil, to be honest. He's quite good at this sort of thing, I have to say, where he's, he's being quite diplomatic. He's obviously friends with Tim Sweeney, he himself said, but even if he wasn't, he's not the type of executive to go around just bad-mouthing other people's companies, especially even if they, he does personally disagree they're not asking for his personal opinion that he kind of represents Xbox and Microsoft, so he can't go around saying, like, oh yeah, Epic Games are terrible, they shouldn't be doing this, because, well, that's just going to cause all sorts of issues. So, yeah, a bit of a, a fair response, but they are definitely taking very, very different strategies when it comes to PC gaming, although Microsoft did try their hand at the whole exclusive thing. Let's not forget that anytime soon with the whole Windows Store thing. And they have clearly learned the area of their ways there because they're at least making some of their games come to Steam but they, the most important ones that come to Steam, like Gears 5 and the new Halo game, are all coming to Steam. So they've clearly learned a lot from their experiences with, the, with, with Windows Store, excuse me. And that's obviously reflected in their um, statement there regarding the Epic Games Store. Now, this interview with Phil is extremely long. There's a lot of interesting questions that I would be happy to talk about, but I'll be here till Christmas. So just go check it out in the description below this video. There's quite a lot of meat there, quite an interesting read, I have to say. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does help out a great deal, and I'll see you next time.